Hey, this is Monique. Welcome to One Mo Project. This is a three-part video about how I made the pages for my grandson's busy book. Now, you know, down the road sometime, if you're one of my grandkids and you didn't get a busy book of your own, shame on me. But for now, there's just one, and so I made one book. Anyway, this video is about how I made each of the pages. It does not include how I put them together. I'm not going to call it any names, but somebody on my production team maybe lost the video or forgot to push record and you know between me and the cats it's probably me but anyway if you can if you can make the pages i'm sure you can put them together but um this is just to give you some ideas on how you might make a busy book for somebody special in your life i call this the milk and the alphabet pages the milk page has snap twist and pull and then the alphabet page has textures zippers capital and lowercase alphabet so, same thing. I started with the fabric, some kind of canvas that's about 26 by 13. But this piece here is going the other direction. This is the flat piece with the lowercase alphabet. And so, I don't know exactly what size it is. Anyway, some HTV heat transfer vinyl for the alphabet. And then some different fabrics for textures. Some bumpy fabric, some coarse fabric, some soft fabric. And I sewed those on there. And just in a fun kind of way, nothing, nothing specific. But I did sew them all as if they could each be their own handle to carry the whole book by. I left some of them loose because the textures were more interesting that way. But like the corduroy, this big corduroy, I wanted it to be able to go bump, bump, bump. This little bit is leather and I pre-glued that little triangle on the top that makes it look like an envelope. Um, just because I didn't want to have to try to keep them straight. And so I went ahead and pre-glued that. This fringe was just a scrap piece I had but it was long enough to fold it into thirds and so you got lots of different little fringy pieces to touch instead of just one layer of them and um he does like that this netting I just pleated it and pinned it down on there because I wanted that nice coarse texture on there so he does rub on all of them but soft is always going to be the best look at that pink it is so soft so same thing handle so across there to make sure that the handle is sturdy enough for carrying the whole book by this handle. But then I ironed that down a little bit just because it stood up so thick. I wanted it to be a little bit flatter. I did put interfacing on there and I used this decorative bond, this really heavy uh, decorator kind of stuff. But um, I probably should have done that before I'd put the HTV on there because I can iron on this side with the iron. I was careful not to make it slide. But you can't put the iron right on top of this vinyl without melting it live and learn anyway so then I folded this in half from the bottom because this unzips and folds down so that's why I, when I put it on there it almost looked like I was putting the lowercase alphabet upside down but it's just because this is gonna fold down and be a flap that folds down out of the book so I made the fold at the bottom if I hadn't done it that way if I'd done it wrong I would have just had a seam across the top but I didn't want to have a seam if I didn't have to anyway turn that right sides out and then use my chopstick to make sure I have some decent corners because the zippers are going to be sewn on to the, each side of this. And I give that a quick press around the edges. Now on to the milk page. The milk page was so much fun. This is some really stiff interfacing that I found at my house. That means I have no idea what it is or what it's called exactly. But it's really heavy and stiff, like something you would use to make a, a purse. But then I did think to go ahead and put the uh, wonder under on here first so that it'll stick in place. This is going to be the milk carton and the juice cup and the milk cup. So got those to lay down and got the wonder under on there. Um, the milk jug is going to be light blue. Apparently it's 2%. At least that's how it is where I live. Dark blue is the whole milk. No, red is whole milk. Anyway, 2% milk. And I got the order right so that I could not have to try to iron other things while I, once I already had the HTV on there and risk melting it. So worked all that so that they have the all the different layers. The milk and the juice cups have felt on both sides of that interfacing, but the milk didn't need it on both sides because it's going to be sewn on there. Then you see my little picture over there. The um, cow I found online is a little neater looking than my cow for drawing on. But I, I had worked out the dimensions on how to make it look like a milk carton because I needed that side so that I could make the milk refill once we drink it all. 
So I just went ahead and drew that on there with a pencil. It was interesting to me, though, because the little part that sticks up at the very top that's, you know, the flat fork of the carton, it's centered on that whole space. I don't know if that's really where it's supposed to be. I don't know if my perspective was right or not, but at the end, eh, it looked okay. All right, and so that lid, that is the almond milk plastic lid. Just the lid from it. I cut it off the top and I'm using it. The rubber band is just a hair rubber band. And then the milk that refills um, is a piece of webbing. So it's going to have a clear piece of vinyl on there to keep it in. I drew my milk and my juice cup with some Taylor's chalk as big as I could. Reinforced the ribbon that's going to keep it in the book so that when the juice is a handle, it won't fall off. I sewed around it once with just a straight stitch so that I could then trim my edges. And then I zigzagged all the way around the lines you know like a coloring page it's white instead of black just to make it more interesting i guess i don't know why i made that decision but it looks fine with the white but i sewed all the way around it so that it had that thick line for the details after i had sewn it once with the straight line to cut it so there's my juice cup and the milk the milk is the same and i found these giant snaps at hobby lobby and uh, while they're a little bit hard to snap because they're snaps they are, they are very fun because he understands what's happening with them because he can see them. So the milk and the juice are the same. Now to make the lid work. I went out to the shop. Look at me using a fire. Oh, I, that is the hair rubber band and I just fused the end to keep it from raveling. And then sewed around all of the lines that are going to be the details with just a straight stitch to hold that interfacing, even though it has wonder under on it, to hold that interfacing, that heavy interfacing, tight up against this fabric. Um, all of the lines that I drew in pencil, I'm going around with a straight stitch so that they're nice and obvious to me and everything is going to stay in the right place. When I make that milk refill thing, that webbing, that... Um, I cut the piece at first the whole length because I hadn't thought through it all carefully. But it turns out it needs to be half the length so that when it's up, it fills up the whole window. But when it's down, you can still see a little bit, but not too much in the top edge of that window. Uh, then I sewed around that hole for where the openings are going to be and cut those openings. But after I cut out that, I did a quick check to make sure that the milk lid what would you call that the lid sure we're going to call it the lid so that the milk lid would fit through there and trimmed away the extra all the way around and then i went ahead and zigzagged all the way around on top of all those lines so that it's sort of like a coloring book sort of look so once i got all of that done all the way around then the next step was to be to put the plastic underneath so that it made the uh, just a little bit of a shield I guess you could maybe do that without putting the plastic on there, but I think that there's a possibility that the my grandson would have tried to pull the milk out through the hole. So this way the hole is closed up. I sewed all around the, each side and left it open at the top and the bottom. And then cut away the extra. I didn't worry about getting it really super close to the zigzag part, just enough that it didn't stick out. Now, to sew this lid in place for the cap I put my zipper foot on there but I did not just sew normal I just turned the flywheel I think I thought I was going to sew and I changed my mind oh no I moved the I moved my needle over that's what it was got it close but then I just turned that flywheel by hand the machine is plenty strong to sew through that plastic collar there underneath the fabric but I didn't want to risk missing and uh, stabbing it, stabbing me, doing something. So I just went all the way around that using the flywheel by hand. But then I did another stitch around it at the outside edge of that zigzag. And that I just sewed because it was going through the cardboard part, not through that plastic collar at the bottom. So then I trimmed away that extra that was showing because that would have been terrible to have weird little things sticking out. And I'm ready to put the milk in it. So I sewed the milk. I just zigzagged all the way down one side with this ribbon. So that it kind of, I used that blue ribbon so it kind of wasn't so obvious. Maybe when, if it was obvious, it would be easier because it would be obvious for him. 
But anyway, I sewed all the way down the one side and I put fray check on this because I didn't want it to turn into a big mess of milk in there. I wanted our milk to stay nice and neat and, you know, smooth across the top. All right, I think I glued the lid. I glued the wood, the, what is that, the cardboard to the interfacing for the milk. And then sewed my snaps on. I know sometimes it looks like the order of things is crazy, but, you know, that's sometimes how things work. Sometimes it is crazy. Um, and then attached them to the side. I wanted this book to have everything attached so that if you take it somewhere, you don't get home and you've lost some of your pieces. When I was going to sew the milk on there, I realized it was going to look funny to be able to see the gray through the open lid or when the milk wasn't full, that it needed to be the blue like you were looking inside of the milk container and it was blue inside. So I quickly sewed a piece on there. Now this is very important. I had to put the elastic piece through the hole in the milk carton before I sewed it on. And it had to be through there so that the lid went on with that elastic down inside through there. So I kind of marked where I needed it and then used a piece of some of this this famous fabric I've been using on this project as a little bit of reinforcement and sewed that elastic off to the side but inside. See the the lid is on the milk and this is going so that it's between the two pieces. That seems like something I could have missed, but yes, luckily this time I only got to do that once. I didn't mess it up and have to do it twice. So now it fits on there and the, the lid can come on and off, but stay with it. All right, now to sew the milk <laughs> under the vinyl. First I sewed down the one side to sew it to the book itself so that I had an edge to work with. But then when I did across the top and the bottom, I didn't leave it open the whole width of that webbing. I just left it open as much as the ribbon. So that helped to pull the ribbon straight and not get things jammed up. But also it keeps them from pulling the milk all the way out. We don't want to have spilt milk because, you know, they'd never be able to get it to go back in there. So I had to make sure that I didn't catch the milk as I sewed around. But then I did sew all the way up to right up next to the ribbon so that it the milk couldn't be pulled out of the container. And then I finished sewing around all the edges so that the carton stayed attached to the book. So here is the finished milk page. Snap, twist, and pull are the different things. Plus a little bit of pretend. And he's maybe getting to be big enough to pretend. We'll see. Anyway, now you can watch him play for a minute while I tell you about how I attach the texture and the lowercase because mm, you know I don't know what happened to that footage anyway I sewed the alphabet page a lowercase across the bottom edge so that when I finished it it would all be sewn in but it also gave me the mark for where the zippers could go and so I just sewed the zippers right on top I sewed it first to the flat piece and then I was able to position it in the book and sew it down to the other book pages I did add a little bit of ribbon so that it's easier to grab the zipper pull for those little bitty fingers that those zipper pulls are nearly invisible. So there he is playing with it, trying to get that on. Not quite sure about the twisting part yet, but understands that you, you put that on there and then the lid is on. Oh, but look, look at that fringe. Mmm, that is so fun. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, if you can get enough of that, watch this. He's trying to get that milk lid off. I did so tie a knot inside to keep it from being so easy. But look, he's going to pretend to get him a drink of milk. <laughs> Sweet baby. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope it's fun. It sure is fun to play with with those little bitty fingers. Anyway, remember what David asked God. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. See you next time.